welcome to growing your own food in your own backyard. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button. This video is an update on my container gardening. I garden in ground and in the container due to my limited space. I want to start off with my bell pepper plants. I always do container gardening with my bell pepper plants. So what you're seeing here is all my bell peppers covered with a mesh insect barrier covering. And the reason why I do this is just to eliminate a lot of the insect pests. So let me take the time to pull these off. So I have three types of bell peppers that I'm growing. Okay, so this particular bell pepper right here is second generation bell pepper. So this is my yellow bell pepper. I'm sorry, it's the first generation. And I started it uh, September um, 2020. No, I, I'm sorry, I used the seed from the bell pepper in September of 20. And I planted it, started from seed of April of 2021. So as you can see, I have a lot of bell peppers on this plant. Now, in the photo above, you will notice that I did start um, harvesting early so that I could make sure I'm making um, more room for additional bell peppers and I could also bring more energy to the bell peppers that are already on the vine because these bell peppers are gonna eventually turn yellow. I noticed that I had a little iron de deficiency on the top leaves, so I did um, add some iron supplement to the plant. So again, this is my yellow bell pepper plant. is the first generation. This particular bell pepper right here, I overwintered this bell pepper last year so i'm doing a lot of experiment with different types of bell peppers this particular one got overwinter indoors this is the bell pepper that i did try to grow indoors in my indoor gardening and if you go to that video on where i was doing some indoor gardening and i will be putting a video on that one i really really struggled i mean the plant was healthy it grew well it flowered it just and and it would get little bell peppers but it would drop the peppers so i'm not sure if i just didn't have a good indoor environment if i wasn't getting the same level of lighting from the grow light that there um, that uh, the sun produces but uh, around uh, May I decided to bring it back out and it's doing really good now the only difference I noticed with this plant is I did not get a lot of height with it but the plants healthy you can see I'm getting bell peppers and I did not have to sacrifice any bell peppers on this plant because um, I don't have a whole lot this bell pepper is trying to turn orange over here if you would see that this is an orange bell pepper so it's going to end up turning orange or red this one is yellow i think this is the orange and red so this is another experiment i did uh, one other thing i want to just know i am in zone 5b semi-arid 5200 feet above sea level and we cannot overwinter our bell peppers because it's too cold Therefore, in, again, this first one um, started from a seed um, on the first generation. So this is the second generation right here of growing bell peppers from the seed. Or I should say this is the first generation bell pepper from the seed of a bell pepper that I uh, grew last year. This is a bell pepper that was overwintered. And I seem to be doing a pretty good job with that one. Now this particular bell pepper plant here, let me see if I can find this. This is an organic store brought mini pepper and it is doing phenomenal. Look at the height on this pepper. Look at the peppers on this plant. I probably have to do some early harvesting to pull some of the larger peppers off because this particular plant is supposed to produce the, the red and yellow peppers. However, with all these peppers on this plant, I would need to try to eliminate the peppers by doing early, early 
harvesting so some of these peppers would be able to turn colors. But again, this is a organic store-bought mini pepper. I started it from seed in fe February of 2021. It is just incredible how um, it has grown and did a great job. So as you can see, I've got three different peppers from three different situations. This is um, the second generation from a bell pepper I grew last year and I took the seed from that first generation pepper and, plant and planted it and it's doing really good. A little iron deficiency. This particular pepper was overwintered indoors under my grow light to try to uh, grow bell peppers indoors, which I was not successful. However, I was able to uh, use this pepper the second, the, um, grow this pepper plant the second time. I'm going to have to thin out the leaves on this plant so it would get more sunlight and I could get the peppers to turn. So it's just a matter of just pulling back a lot of the leaves that's in front of the peppers in order to expose them a little more to light. Now the good thing about the leaves is that it did keep it sheltered so it doesn't get sun skull because pe uh, peppers will get sun skull and our sun's very intense in Colorado and because we're much higher elevation but now right now the peppers are pretty much in a mature state and so now it's just a matter of trying to get them to turn colors so as you can see how I'm just pulling off the leaves to try to expose the peppers. So right now I've got really mature peppers here. It's prolific, just impressive. From a store-bought organic mini pepper but just wanted to explain to you that when you're getting close to the season ending and your peppers are not turning colors then you want to just start exposing the peppers to sun a little better and by thinning out the leaves so just wanted to share that tip with you i'm growing sweet potatoes again this year last year i didn't do very good I think I had too much nitrogen in the soil and I had a lot of beautiful foliage however the bell peppers were very small and I didn't get a good harvest. I changed my um, growing practice with this bell pepper and I decided to make sure that the soil had less nitrogen, had more phosphate and more potassium and the bell pepper started, uh, excuse me, this sweet potato plant started from an organic sweet potato that I purchased at an organic store and I chipped the potatoes on my own and I have a video on that and I will show you that and or you can go to my videos and see how you could grow your own plant from a sweet potato and chip your own uh, sweet potato. I do use covers to keep the bell pepper from being um, bothered by a lot of pesty insects it is now almost ready to be harvested. As you can see, the leaves are starting to turn yellow. They're starting to, turn, they're starting to die back. Once I have a complete die back on this sweet potato plant, it'll be ready for harvesting. So I'm hoping that with some changes in my growing practices with sweet potatoes, again, zone 5B, 5,200 feet above sea level, semi-arid, We'll see if I can successfully grow sweet potatoes in this environment. It is um, growing in a um, container because I can pretty much control the environment and hopefully get a very successful uh, crop this year. So I want to take you to the other crops that I'm growing in containers. I am growing ginger. I have been very successful in growing ginger. This is my second year of growing ginger. Unfortunately, our growing season is very short. Therefore, I do have to bring the ginger indoors and continue growing 
until ready to harvest. It takes about 10 to 11 months for ginger to completely complete its growing cycle and for the ginger to harvest. So I am growing ginger in this particular container and I'm growing ginger in this container. If you would check out my video on where I produced a tropical microclimate right where I'm standing, this is literally a tropical microclimate. You can see my elephant ears over here that has done really well. And the reason why this is a big deal, because I am in a semi-arid climate and we are 5,200 feet above sea level. So these type of tropical plants do not do well in our environment. However, if you can create a microclimate where you can create the same environment that you see in the tropics, then you can grow tropical type plants. So this is what I'm doing here with ginger. Now I'm thinking we probably have another six weeks of growing season. Therefore, I would bring this plant in and I would go ahead and harvest what little bit I can from this particular ginger plant and then transfer it over to a, a smaller container and continue um, growing it indoors under a grow light. And once I'm ready to harvest um, those ginger plants, I will up give you an update. So I'm gonna take you to my other containers where I'm growing vegetables. In this particular container, I'm growing a Perry Morse lettuce. And I just got through watering it, so it looks kind of a little flimsy, but this is gonna be ready to be harvested pretty soon. How am I able to grow lettuce in the middle of the summer? Well, I keep a, a cover over the lettuce, which does block some sunlight out and also keeps the critters from attacking the crop and I have it up against my barbecue grill that also blocks a lot of the sunlight. This is in an area where it only just gets morning sun and right now it's getting a little bit of the morning sun in about another hour it will be completely shaded. So it is again a Perry Morse lettuce. It's doing really good. It's an organic seed. Um, it just got water, so it would probably be standing up just a little bit more. In about a week, I'll be ready to harvest this lettuce, and I'll bring you along when I'm harvesting. Let me take you to my other container. I'm growing carrots. I'm growing pineapples. Moringas. Pineapple. Pineapple. Strawberry. And let me tell you a little bit about this one. Now, this is not a crop, but my Canaan lily is four years old. I've turned this into a perennial, and also this particular plant, which I think they're called spikes. Every year, I, right before fall, or right before the, full, the, the first frost, I cut it back give it a good watering and overwinter it in the garage. The only thing that does not get kicked, to cut back is the spikes. But I do cut back my Canaan lily. Now, unfortunately, this plant's been attacked by Japanese beetle. You can see the damage here. And for some reason, it loves my yellow flowers. And therefore, in order for me to enjoy the fruits of my labor, I had to cover my uh, flowers. I took the covers off maybe two days ago and lo and behold, the following day, Japanese beetles were on the flowers. Therefore, I do have to try to protect my blooms, but other than that, it has became a perennial for three years. So this allows me to enjoy the beauty of the tropics right here in Zone 5B, semi-arid. 5,200 feet above sea level. So if anyone who wants to enjoy tropics and you're not in a tropical environment, you can. Plant it in a container, enjoy it during this uh, growing season. Soon as you're right before the first frost, cut it back, take it into your garage and let it overwinter. And then the following spring, it will st start setting up shoots just like it's ready for spring, right in your own garage. And as soon as I see the shoots come up, I would move it out into the sun during the day. The nights were still cool, 
but it's once the temperatures get up to about 50 the nighttime temperatures get up get up to about 50 degrees then I completely bring it out therefore um, there are a lot of benefits to uh, growing plants in your container you can grow food as you can see with the pineapples sweet potatoes Canaan lilies ginger and etc so I just wanted to take you along give you an update on the benefits of growing flowers and crops in um, containers you have a lot more control and you are able to still have your tropics in a northern climate thank you for watching and don't forget to hit the like button